Hi, welcome to the Roundhouse Podcast. I'm Paul Solentrop with Wichita State University Strategic Communications. We're here with Wichita State Assistant Director of Track and Field, John Wise. We're going to talk about the American Athletic Conference Outdoor Championships that are coming up this weekend. We'll probably talk about some other things, some Cincinnati chili, maybe some movies, have a wide-ranging conversation here. Uh, we're on, on screen, on video for the first time, thanks to WSU-TV. Uh, so we'll see how, see how that goes. John, thank you for coming. How are you today? Pretty good. I'm not sure why they picked two guys that look like us to be on TV for the first time, but you know, we'll try to do our best and uh, keep think, them entertained for a yes, while. Yes, that will become apparent <laughs> as this podcast rolls on, I'm sure. The question you get asked a lot, the question I think every coach, every administrator at Wichita State gets asked is first year in the American Athletic Conference. How's it going? What's it, what's it been like from a track perspective? What are, you, what are you seeing from this new conference? Yeah, I think that obviously the focus a lot of the public would be about basketball and maybe even baseball and some of those uh, team sports, but every almost every day I'm a, I'm out. I get asked that question. Uh, last night I happened to see an alum out at a restaurant, and that was the first question he asked me. Um, How's the new conference? I think most people they they think, and and I'd say probably rightly so. They think that it's a step up um, in in competition, and um, and it is in track and field, <clears throat> but it's but it's just a slight step up, I would say. We, um, we've been obviously really good in the Missouri Valley for a long time. We won a bunch of championships. And, and the way that the American is different than the Valley is just there's more teams. So in track and field, that creates more depth in the conference. So when you're, when you're looking at what it takes to score in eight places, let's say it's the, um, you know, the, the mile, and usually uh, for a guy who runs four, 10 in the mile might be eighth place in the in the valley when there was only about you know seven or eight teams in men's track and field now when there's nine or ten teams there's just two or three more teams adding more depth so the top of the conference is pretty similar in what it takes to win and what it takes to get second or third but getting seventh sixth seventh eighth place points are there's more of those guys there um, and same thing on the girls there's 12 teams in women's track and field in the American conference so the points are very much spread out so last year, we scored over 200 points to win the uh, Missouri Valley Women's Championship. And right now, if you look at the Women's Championship, about 100 points is going to win the meet, or somewhere around a little over 100 points. Um, so that, so the, a really good athlete um, makes a bigger difference than it did in the Missouri Valley. You still have to have athletes everywhere to score points here and there. Um, but but a, a star athlete probably is a little more valuable than they were in the Missouri Valley. So, um, so that's you know, a difference. There's um, a, a big difference between the men's and women's leagues right now because the University of Houston men's team is, has a chance to win a national title. They're that good. And um, at the conference level, they're really good too. So we're, we're challenging them indoor. We kind of made a little run at them. Um, they, they won the indoor championship. But outdoor, they're really, really good. And they're right now picked to finish second at the NCAA outdoor championships. So we've run into a conference where there's a team that's at the highest point they've ever been in their program's history. Um, and so the women's, the women's conference is very balanced, the men's conference is a little top heavy that way. So it's, it's um, the, the, you know, the, but, but the big differences in terms of uh, our initial impression is just trying to figure out, do we recruit different? Do we um, need to schedule different? Do, you know, are the athletes that we have that we recruited in the Missouri Valley the kind of athletes that we'll do on the American Conference? And generally, the answer has been yes. It's not been that dramatic of a difference, but we are just trying to tweak it as we go. Houston's won three of the four outdoor titles on the on the men's side, uh, renowned for their sprints. Mm -hmm. Are there different events that are strong in the American than were strong in the in the Valley? And how does that go into your calculations? Yeah, the the sprint events are really strong. It's probably the uh, best part of the conference. Um, Mostly because Houston, right now, they've got the best group in the country. They've got the number one and number two guys in the nation in the 100-meter dash. And, uh, and so that's, um, that makes those events difficult to score in. We had a guy in the 60-meter dash indoor make the final and score points, Denver Griffin. And he's only a sophomore. So we're, we have athletes that can score and that can get in there and, and contribute. But, yeah, the, I would say the sprint events are the biggest difference from one conference to the other. Other than that... I would say there's not um, a lot of difference except more depth. Um, even in some events, the Valley was a little bit better than the, than the uh, American. But 
I think that when you, if you take the two conferences and you have the American here and the Valley here, you take Wichita State out of the Valley and put them in the American, this is kind of what it looks like. So before that, if you took, you know, it was kind of like this. Right. And so um, the other coaches in the league have commented at the indoor championship because it was our first experience at the, at the championship was when we were, we were in Birmingham, Alabama indoor. And they go, yeah, you guys have made a difference. This conference is different already. They felt it was different, more competitive. And um, there was more of a sense of urgency from the teams to, you know, not make a mistake. And um, that those mistakes would be kind of, you know, more deadly because there's just not that much of a room for or margin for error now, and so, and we found that too. We had a lot of close calls indoor. We lost our second place by four points, and there's all kinds of places that we had that we could have got those four points. So, um, so hopefully we had the outdoor meet. Um, our goal is to get a trophy, which is top two, and and I think it'll be um, it'll be difficult to do that, but I think we have the guys that can do it. Women's side, obviously, it's a little bit of a different situation that we're redshirting a bunch of our women this year, kind of a rebuilding. Situation, but by next year we should be back in the hunt. We feel like we're gonna um, have a team ready to challenge to win trophies next year on the women. Will you uh, will you challenge the Houston coaching staff to a to a sprint to a relay any kind of race against those guys? <clears throat> well, um, probably would not be the smartest move for us. Although the two head coaches could maybe not be too far apart. Leeward Burrell, who's the head coach at Houston, and. Uh, who was a former world record holder in the 100, right. for those people that don't, don't know. Yeah, let's take, explain um, who, the, yeah, who, who exactly yeah. the coaches are at Houston. He, he's in a pretty similar level of fitness as Coach Rainbolt right now. Okay. And so they're, you know, not to say what level that fitness is, right. but they might be a pretty equal match. Coach Rainbolt has two new knees, so right. I think he's on the comeback a little bit. <clears throat> he would definitely win a golf scramble if we were to have a, a conference golf scramble probably with them. But the, if you move down to their, their assistant coach in the sprints versus the Wichita State sprints coach, it may be tough since their coach had won nine gold medals. And, uh, and you have won how many? Our, our coach, he was all-conference in, in the Mid-American Conference once. So, um, so yeah, that would be a, a tough relay for us to, to pull off. Right, and that is Carl Lewis. <clears throat> that is Carl yes. Lewis. It's, it's pretty surreal because he was a guy I... As a kid, grew up watching and, you know, you know, kind of idolizing when, it, you know, he's one of the best athletes in the history of the world in any sport. And, and so as a kid, when you see that guy on TV and when you kind of like, you know, look up to a guy like that and now we're, you know, sending messages to each other, you know, text messages about things about the conference and it's just kind of a weird deal. Uh, I'm going to Cincinnati this week for our conference meet and I've had so many people say, hey, can you introduce me to Carl Lewis? And, like sure, I, I'm, I'm sure he's a nice guy and he'll say hi to you. But it's just kind of a weird kind of saying that I know that guy a little bit. But the strange thing is I'm coaching against that guy and they're doing a really good job. So we got to figure out how to over, overcome the fact that he's won nine gold medals and and I have not in, right. in recruiting a little bit. But right. So um, Leroy Burrell <clears throat> and Carl Lewis, two of the Houston coaches, pretty yeah. pretty interesting. And their, and their distance coach is a very well known uh, distance coach who's done a good job and. Uh, Steve Magnus, he's, he's kind of, in the track and field world, he's a pretty well-known guy. Um, and so, yeah, they, they've got a great <clears throat> coaching staff, but the, the, whole, the conference as a whole, there's a lot of really great coaches. And, and so it's, it's a, there's some people who are great athletes and then people that have been in the coaching world for a long time. So um, in kind of like in basketball, in the, in the conference, there's some names. There's some definitely big names in the basketball coaching world in the American conference. In the track and field world, it's kind of the same. Some of the, a lot of the head coaches are people that were former Olympians or um, have been coaching for a long time and had a lot of success. So it's kind of interesting to be in that. The, the Missouri Valley coaches were really good. They were great, great coaches. They probably didn't have the name recognition as some of these coaches do. Um, but, but yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a good conference to be in, and we're working hard to, to try to figure out how to win this conference. You mentioned recruiting, so now that you've got a you know you've got a year of, of data, or will have a year of data, you've got the you know you're always recruiting. Uh, how what kind of tweaks might you make as far as assembling the squad for for next season? <clears throat> well, <clears throat> that's a constant discussion in our office, and like I was kind of talking about before, the good athletes are going to be good in any conference. So our our athletes like we've had like Nikki Larchmiller and you know. Jared Bellardo and, and Tanya Friesen and, you know, guys like that, Hunter Veith, like those athletes that develop into good athletes in the Missouri Valley are going to be good athletes in the American Conference. Um, so that's, that's no different. The question is how do we make the, 
I guess the bottom half of our roster better to, to be able to score those points that are fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth type points um, that are so critical in winning a championship because they're, they're, they've had to be better athletes. So, you know, we've kind of expanded our recruiting a little bit. It's one thing is a coincidence has happened as we've moved into this conference. I don't know exactly which one happened first, um, but, but there's certain places now that get in-state tuition to go to Wichita State. Right. So the I-35 corridor there, if you live in Oklahoma City or Dallas or Tulsa, you get in-state tuition to go to Wichita State. And so we've really started looking hard at those areas. We've signed some kids already in this recruiting class right now on those, on, you know, in those areas to get in-state tuition. So that's been a, a big help because Dallas is an area that has a lot of track and field talent. Um, we've signed a couple kids from Oklahoma City this year that are, that are really good that we would not have been able to sign. Um, it's a little different, the head count sport versus equivalency sport right. and how that works, but, um, but that has been a focus and we're starting to, to look at that more. The other part, the other place that gets in-state tuition is the Kansas City, Missouri area. So now we can recruit up there a little harder. We've always gotten some kids from Kansas City, Kansas, but now on the Missouri side, they get in-state tuition too. So in a sport like us where the dollars are, are stretched very thin, um, trying to make it economically um, affordable for a kid to come and build a team. With men, we have 12 scholarships, and women, we have 18 scholarships. Um, you have to get creative. and those, So that has helped us. So our focus, not that we're not recruiting Kansas kids, because we are recruiting a lot of Kansas kids still, um, but we're probably just expanding our reach a little bit more to maybe some of those areas that um, have a little bit higher level athlete. Um, so, you know, we're always going to still try to get the best athletes. We're still going to, the best kids in Kansas, we're going to recruit every one of them. And if there's some kid from California that we have a connection with or think we might be able to get in with, then we're going to recruit that kid. Um, but we also have to kind of use our energies and, and uh, budget wisely to try to figure out the most efficient way to do it. And if there's a group of athletes like in Dallas that can help us, then that's a good way to go. I went um, on a trip recently down there and it was, it was interesting because <clears throat> no, you're not quite sure how you're perceived outside of Wichita sometimes. Um, I'm from Ohio and <clears throat> didn't know a whole lot about Wichita State before I moved here. I knew some things and here and there kind of living a thousand miles away. So you don't know once you get out of that, out of our bubble here in Wichita sometimes, but I was very encouraged that so many high school coaches came up to me and knew about our program um, and say, we're doing a good job, would you be interested in my kid, this and that. So that's in the Dallas area. So hopefully um, the move to the new conference has helped some of that and that our success is, has been a big part of that and that over time will yield <clears throat> the really good recruits that'll help our program become better and help win this conference a little bit. Let's take a break from track and field briefly. Best movie you've seen in 2018. Oh, okay. So I love movies. Uh, that would be, I, I've not gone out to the movies a ton, uh, track and field season. So pretty much 2018 has been track and field. Right. But I did see A Quiet Place. Uh, that was a kind of horror thriller movie that's out right now that's kind of surprised everybody. That was really good. It was, I appreciated the creativity. I don't know if you've seen that. I have seen it. That was going to be my pick as well. Yes, I really and enjoyed that. I, 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 we can we'll get off the tracks here and talk for an hour about this. I, I'm not a fan of the super big budget, you know, movies. I, people want to go see Avengers. That's great. I'm probably not going to go see the Avengers. Um, I'm going to look for something else. But I appreciate that movie because I'd never seen that movie before. I'd I've gone to horror movies or thrillers, and I feel like, well, I've, this is a version of this movie. But that was a unique way to, you know, to watch a movie in silence with a bunch of other people in the theater. That was different. That was a different experience that I thought was kind of good. Even if the movie wasn't the greatest, which I think it was a pretty good movie even, even then, but the experience of going to a movie and making sure that I'm not eating my popcorn at the wrong time because it's going to disturb someone because it's so quiet in the theater, uh, I thought that made it kind of an interesting experience. So that was, that was the one that I probably, it's probably the best movie I've seen this year. But one other one that I had one of my, my best experience was seeing The Room in the, in the theater. So I don't know if you know about The Room. Mm -hmm. And uh, they played it in January in, in theaters throughout Wichita for one night screening. It's this, for anybody that doesn't know, The Room is this terrible movie that was made in the, I don't know, 12 years ago um, that somehow got this cult following. And so they have screenings from time to time around and people make fun of it and throw things at the screen. 
And I was with a you know, bunch of friends and we went in a sold out theater in Wichita and it was hilarious and you know, strange and fun the whole time. So probably my best movie going experience was seeing The Room in January in Wichita. Seeing The Room. Yeah. Are you a movie pass guy? I, I understand this is a controversy. <coughs> I, I am not, but I'm, I'm open I'm, to other opinions. I'm not. And, and it's probably because in the track season I don't go to that many movies. I probably am more at home watching some kind of movie. But um, I'm... You know, I'd, I'd feel like if I got that, I feel like I have to go see stuff, right. and I don't. I'm one of those guys that I don't like being told what I have to do, <laughs> at least to get my you know money's worth. Uh, but, but no. So I haven't. Maybe once the track season's over, maybe that would be something that I would feel like I'd have more time to see movies, and that would be more a better value. But I'm uh, not a movie pass guy at the moment. Let's get back to track and field. <laughs> All right. Uh, I know the Wichita State coaches. You do the, you know, you pretty much chart out the meet before mm -hmm. you have a real good idea about where you fall. You have what you call move up points, places where you may, you know, maybe you can gain some points. Uh, so, if we take indoor as a starting point, maybe uh, men's team finished third in the indoor, women's team finished twelfth. What's the form chart telling you for the for the outdoor meet? So, if we start with the men, um, Houston would, is definitely the favorite on the men. Um, it, we do two things. One is we take the, the meet and we just score it straight off the conference list. So that's one way to look at it. You can just say, here's the top eight, score them out, here's all the events. And that's a very objective way to look at it where you don't have any biases or anything like that. And then the other way to lo start looking at it is to say, well, obviously this person can't run all four of these distance races, so we've got to maybe take them down a few points. Uh, we have a guy like Hunter Veith that um, it is in a lot of different events and we got to figure out how to put him to score the most points. And so you start doing that with all the teams to get a more probably realistic viewpoint. Um, and so, so that comes out, when the heat sheets come out, we're able to really zero on that. So, but right now as we look at it, either way, Houston's going to be the favorite. Probably, you know, 30 to 40 point, I would say, favorite. <clears throat> Once the, the final everything, all the heat sheets come out. And then it's probably us and Memphis are pretty equal. Memphis, I guess you could say on paper, is a little bit ahead of us, um, but you know, not very, not not by much. So, so those three teams, and then it kind of drops off after that. Indoor, it was it seemed much more balanced indoor, but us, Houston, and Memphis all have some outdoor events that are better than the rest of the conference. So the, like the 400 hurdles, the four by one, where the top three teams in the four by one, uh, the javelin, you know, the discus isn't a good event for Memphis, so. Uh, the steeplechase is another good event for, for those teams. And so we've kind of separated, I guess, from the rest of the conference. So then you have UConn and Cincinnati and some of those teams kind of chasing to try to get into that top three. So, so really I see Houston as the favorite with us and Memphis kind of chasing Houston. Hopefully um, they have a couple hiccups and we're able to, to close the gap on them. That kind of happened indoor. And we started closing the gap and then we weren't able to finish the meet the way we wanted to. And, and Houston it ended up you know, pulling away a little bit and Memphis caught us. And, we felt like we, we should have gotten second indoor. Um, so that'll be fun, a fun challenge for our guys. And, and if we are able to beat Memphis and the rest of the teams um, and, and get second, that would be great. Obviously, our, our guys are, are focused on winning. That's the attitude of our guys' team, and they, they're going to try to figure out how to win that meet. Um, <clears throat> but, but I think coming away with a top two finish would be a great, a great thing, considering we literally are competing against one of the best teams in the country. And... Um, that's that respect has to be given to them, and uh, they they could win the conference meet, and then they could go win the NCAA meet uh, four weeks later, and they're very capable of doing that. So, on the women's side, you know we, we're red shirting about 30, 35 girls right now, uh, over half of our roster. So we're taking an unbelievably young team to the conference meet. Um, indoor, it was a struggle. We had some injuries and. And so literally we were kind of decimated and, and struggled at that indoor meet. And the outdoor meet, it's kind of a, it's two groups. You have about five or six teams that are pretty close within about 20 to 25 points. Any of those teams could probably win the championship from 100 points to about 75 points. And then you have about five or six teams that are all grouped in the, kind of the second half. And so our goal is to finish at the top of that second half, which would put us right in the middle of the league. Um, that would be a heck of an accomplishment for the girls, considering we may be redshirting more points right now than we have on the you know, track and field area. Um, and so if we're able to do that, you know, that would be a, a good accomplishment. We're, we're charted for, in the mid-40s for points. 
Um, if we score somewhere in the 50s, we could probably finish in the maybe sixth place would be what Coach Rainwalt always refers to as a you know upper division finish. And so a sixth place would be a great finish. Um, and that I know that doesn't sound great for what our expectations usually are, um, but when you're taking mostly freshmen there that, um, you know, in a new conference, that would be a, a great deal. And so if we're able to do that this year with, with that group and that group gets better in another year and we add all these other girls that, that are, have been working out and getting better and redshirting, next year we should be in that towards that 100-point goal, and that would put us right in the running to hopefully win a championship next year. So. Hunter Veith, one of the nation's top uh, decathletes, <clears throat> finished second at the heptathlon, the NCAA indoor. What, what is the plan for him this weekend? So it looks like uh, we won't have Hunter do the decathlon. And, and so that's kind of what he did indoor. He didn't do the heptathlon indoor. Um, we're going to just compete him in individual events. His, his best chances to score, he's a good hurdler. He was all-conference in the hurdles indoor. Um, he's a great long jumper. And so he, he would have a shot of winning a long jump title. Um, but there's a bunch of good long jumpers in this league, so hopefully he can do well there. Um, he'll probably high jump and pole vault. Those are, those are events he can score. Um, and then we'll probably put him in a triple jump or something like that, it, uh, an event that the triple jump is at the end of the meet, so we kind of put some guys in there, and hopefully they can, they can uh, gather up a couple points there at the end of the meet if we need it. Um, he hasn't triple jumped all year except for at the conference indoor meet, so, but he's an athletic enough guy. He did it last year at the conference meet and did really well. Um, and then that also gives him some availability to do some relays if we need him to. He's not on the, our relays, um, but he's a guy that, if he's running well or if we have an injury or something like that, he could hop on either a 4x1 or a 4x4. Four four. Um, those relays are at the, towards the end of the meet. So um, he, he ran on the indoor 4x4. Four four. And so, so, yeah, he's critical. If we're going to win a trophy, we need Hunter to do well. And he's one of the best athletes in the nation. He's been um, a little bit um, dealing with a couple aches and pains, so he hasn't competed in a couple weeks. But he's such a good competitor and a, a veteran that I imagine he won't that won't bother him and he'll be ready to go he's feeling much better um, as he's been practicing recently and and we've just kind of held him out to help get him ready one to get him feeling good but two because he's got a lot long a, a long season still ahead he's got the conference meet he'll probably compete in some events at the NCAA preliminaries and then he'll be at the NCAA championships that's an automatic you know top 24 go to that and so he'll be in the decathlon at the NCAA championships and then possibly beyond. He's a guy that um, if he wants to keep competing this summer, he'll, he's going to be qualified to the USA Championships and have a chance to compete internationally even through the summer if he wanted to. So, um, so there's, you, know, you kind of balance the priorities of helping our team this week with um, trying to help that guy individually have success throughout the rest of his summer. And, and that's a difficult balance, but he's a tough-minded guy, and, and he's had a great year, and I think he'll be able to balance that. Him and Coach Rainbow have had a good plan. It worked beautifully indoor. He finished second at the NCA, and, and then he scored 8,000 points at the Texas Relays in the decathlon, his first decathlon. Um, and so, you know, really awesome. It's going to uh, be tough to not have him on the team next year because this year has been uh, so awesome to watch him compete at a – level that not many collegians get to and we've been lucky lucky here at Wichita State to watch him and watch him from a guy who we recruited as a triple jumper out of Cheney, Kansas who was probably not quite good enough on the long jump to compete for us but he had some events and kind of threw the javelin okay um, to being a guy who if, if he wants to be a professional athlete he can be that you know in track and field and that's pretty hard to do and so that's that whole thing is a pretty cool deal and it's at the end now but um, but we're super proud of him and excited to see how he finishes off career. I know he's excited for this meet. Uh, give us one event, maybe one for the men, one for the women, that's kind of pivotal. If it goes well, it will really help uh, yeah. and something that you really need to go well. Um, so probably um, I'd say on, on the, the men, the javelin is a really interesting event. We've dominated the javelin in our league, and you did a, a nice story on our javelin guys and the challenges in this new league. Um, I saw on, on that Roundhouse article, hopefully everybody's been reading those. Those are really good. Um, but the javelin is interesting because that's an event that we usually pile up the points in the Missouri Valley. And in this league, um, we're going to score some good points, but all these schools that we're talking about have one good javelin thrower. We've got four or five, and if our four or five can – 
you know, edge those guys out, the point swings are massive because we're going to go from 10 to 15 points to 20 or 25 points, and every time we go up, they go down. And the javelin is a squirrely event. Um, there's guys that their best marks have been from six weeks ago, and some of them maybe haven't thrown in a while. Or um, We've got Damien Odell. He's been the same way. He's going to be out there competing, but his best is from quite a long time ago. Um, and so, you know, that's a, a very, very critical event for us and, and one that it's on Sunday, so it's the final day. So the team scoring will can dramatically shift by the time the, the javelin gets done. Um, and, and not only that, it's an upper level event. It, it may be the best javelin league in the United States right now um, to score eighth place in. And, and so that, um, that's one of those events that we're, we're going to be keenly watching very closely. Um, so, so men's javelin, that's going to be fun, and our guys are really excited about it. I know that they're, you know, when they're dominating an event so much that like they have been, and now there's a new challenge, it's just a new energy that those guys have, and you can tell that they're motivated to do really well. So that'll be fun. Um, I'd say on the, um, on the women's side, um, we're, we're, uh, our, Winnie Koskai is a freshman distance runner, and she's ranked second in the 5 and the 10K. And so she's a big point score possibility for us. And, but she's only a freshman. And so I think but she's, she's getting so much better every week. And so I think if she has a good meet, that could be a, a big key if we're going to challenge the middle of the, of the conference and on the women's side. So um, when, when you're only going to possibly score 40 or 50 points and one athlete can score almost 20 of those points, obviously that's a huge chunk of what you're what um, your goal as a team is. So, so 5K, 10K for Winnie, that would be uh, definitely something to watch. And if she's able to run like she's been running recently, she's going to challenge up in there. And, and then um, it'll be just another, um, another peg for, for our distance group that I think Kurt Hunter has uh, getting ready to come next year that's going to really score a ton of points. You're from near Cincinnati, mm -hmm. so you're kind of going back home. Uh, and I know these things are always more, always very busy. Will you have any chance to experience Cincinnati chili, see the sights, <laughs> uh, introduce any of the shockers to any of the delights of your hometown? Yes. Yeah, so uh, when I told Coach Rainbow, so Coach Rainbow coached in Ohio as well. Now he didn't coach at Cincinnati. He coached me at Kent State University. So he's from Ohio. He knows a little bit about Ohio. But when I told him we were two blocks away from uh, um, Skyline Chili, he about flipped out. And so Coach Rainbolt's very excited to get back and try some of the chili in Cincinnati. Um, but explain, yeah, the, explain the Cincinnati Chili to Cincinnati those who chili, have not experienced it. It's, I would say it's not like a chili you would eat here that's full of big meats and vegetables and things like that. It's more of a sauce, I would say. Um, and people put it on spaghetti. So if you've ever been to Steak and Shake, people do the uh, Chili Mac spaghetti with chili and, and some other stuff in there. In Cincinnati, they have a three, four, or five way, and it depends on how many toppings you want. And that's chili with spaghetti, or chili, spaghetti with chili and cheese, and they pile an enormous amount of cheese on top of it, of shredded cheese. Then you can get onions or beans or anything like that you want on it. They do the same thing with conies, so hot dog with, with that on there. And it's like McDonald's in Cincinnati. There's probably more uh, chili parlors like that than there are any restaurant in Cincinnati. And there's multiple different kinds of chains between Skyline and Gold Star than all these local restaurants that have the same thing. So, um, yeah, I'm excited to have some Cincinnati-style chili. Uh, it's definitely an acquired taste, but once you acquire it, it's just addicting. Um, and this is basically a Cincinnati thing. You don't pretty find much. it uh, other places yeah, I've around the country. I've never seen it anywhere else. You know, Steak and Shake has tried to do something like that, but it's not. It's not the same. It's a different kind of a... a flavor or whatever. But yeah, it's, it's an odd thing that's just specific to Cincinnati. So I probably will not have our athletes eat too much of that until the meet's over. It's not the healthiest thing uh, to, to have. But, but yeah, we're, we're, uh, I'm excited. I'm, there's, I have a lot of family members and friends, and my high school track coach is going to come to the meet, and uh, that's going to be fun to kind of gather up. And I probably won't get a lot of sleep because after the meet's over, I'll be hanging out with friends and, and trying to catch up. My, my mom is coming up from Florida, and so kind of Mother's Day, that's going to be a nice thing to see her that I usually don't, aren't able to do. So um, that'll be a lot of fun. And we're, you know, obviously focused on the meet, but it'll be great for me to be able to, to go home and show off the shockers a little bit to Cincinnati people that, that are living there and hopefully get a little contingent of fans for, 
for our, our team to support them. So you can celebrate on Sunday with some, some chili and some, is it Grater's ice cream? Is that Grater's the, ice cream. Grater's ice cream. Absolutely. It's all kinds of Cincinnati, Cincinnati trivia that we're giving out today. Yeah, they do have Grater's ice cream in Wichita. I found a store that has Grater's ice cream, so uh, Dylan's on 21st and Woodlawn there. Yeah, they've got some Grater's ice cream in the freezer. Excellent. It's absolutely spectacular. All right, track and field, movies, food, we've covered it all. John, thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. Uh, this has been the Roundhouse Podcast with John Wise, Wichita State Track and Field. The American Athletic Conference Outdoor Championships start Friday. Thanks for listening.